This was the beginning of our American Navy. <laughs> it looks a little bit like a rowboat with a can on either side. I'm sure it struck fear in the hearts of the British <laughs> as we rowed toward them. I mean, this is crazy. We're capturing ships with a rowboat. This is remarkable. Well, how in the world do you describe what's happening? John Adams very simply said, it appears to me the eternal Son of God is operating powerfully against the British nation. <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> Translation, it's all God. There's no way we can do this without God. But see, the reality is, they've been praying and asking God to move. So it was no surprise when God was doing something. They said, oh, it's totally God. We, we prayed and asked God to move, and God's moving. They were not people that were trying to shun God. They understood without God's help, we'll never accomplish. This is why General George Washington, 1778, he wrote one of his generals, General Thomas Nelson, a letter. And, and in this letter, he explained how... how the hand of God was so obvious. Here's what he said. He said, the hand of providence has been so conspicuous in all this that he must be worse than an infidel that lacks faith and more than wicked that has not gratitude enough to acknowledge his obligations. He said, if, if someone looks and can't see that God's been moving, y you, must be, you must be worse than a non-believer that has no faith at all or y you must just be plain wicked if you can't acknowledge that God's been moving. It was so obvious to them. Now, this is very contrary to what we hear today. But John Adams, at the end of the revolution, he was asked, how did you guys achieve everything you achieved? John Adams said the general principles on which the fathers achieved independence were the general principles of Christianity. Very plainly, he said it was, it was only because the principles of God's kingdom, the word of God, it was God's help, very much gave credit. Now, again, that's not at all what we hear today. In fact, here's an article that ran in the LA Times. America's unchristian beginnings. The founding fathers were deists who rejected the divinity of Jesus. Here's one that ran in the East Coast. The authors of the Declaration were enemies of Christ. In fact, here's one that was done by a college professor. The founding fathers were not Christians, <coughs> which is interesting because I, I, I travel and speak a lot. And, and I speak at a lot of, of high schools, both Christian schools and public schools. I do a lot of homeschool events. In fact, I do a lot of summer camps. And one of the things I like to do is put this picture up. And I say, okay, this, these are the 56 signers. Who can you name? We have 56 signers. This is the picture. Who can you name on this picture? That's what it sounds like. <laughs> and then someone gets really brave and says, okay, well, I think Thomas Jefferson's up there. And I go, yes, Thomas Jefferson's up here. Who else do we know? Well, well, Benjamin Franklin's up there. Yes. Do you know I have yet to have any high school student be able to name anybody besides Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin? It's interesting that we've been trained to identify the two least religious founding fathers. Interesting. Now, what I do is I say, okay, now let's just, let's just start on the side. Let's see who we know. Richard Henry Lee, and nobody knows who that is. I say, okay, what about George Clinton? Nobody knows who that is. Okay, what about Sam Adams? Isn't he the guy with the beard? <laughs> He's the father of the American Revolution. He... He's the guy that had it not been for him, there would not have been a revolution. In fact, that whole idea with, with him having the beer, it's a very, very bad uh, misrepresentation, misportrayal of the story. Because the reality was, he actually was not a very good family man because he spent all his time in the city trying to stir the men up to action against the crown. Because of that, his father died. His father had a malt brewery. His father left it to him. He spent so much time out trying to stir people up into action, he neglected the business so much the business shut down. So he actually lost the business. He was not a great businessman, although he's the one responsible for stirring everybody up. But Dr. Benjamin Rush, the guy we'll look at later, he actually had this remarkable study. He went through it, and, and he analyzed all the alcohol at the time. And he went through this Sam Adams, the malt that he brewed, and he said Sam Adams Brewery, what he puts in his drink is less than 1% alcohol. He said it's impossible to get drunk off what Sam Adams did. In fact, it only had enough that it could kill the, the amoebas, the dysentery, the bad stuff in the drink. It wasn't enough you could get drunk off of it. But today, that's the only thing people know about Sam Adams is, is a beer, which isn't even the accurate story. But we can keep going. Charles Carroll. Nobody knows who Charles Carroll is. Okay. What about Robert Morris? And we can keep going. Benjamin Rush and Elbridge Jerry. And you have Robert Tree Payne. And we can go around the room. And for the most part, most people have never heard of these names. And today we're told well, they were all atheists, they were agnostics, they were deists, they didn't believe in God, they, they didn't want to get God in anything we did. We hear this idea of the separation of church and state, that God's not allowed in anything we do because you've got to keep God. And that's what we're told these guys wanted. 
Well, the reality is, because we don't know these guys, we don't really know what they believed or not. The fact is, of these 56 signers, 29 of them had Bible school or seminary degrees. Now, I'll point out that's pretty impressive for a group of atheists. <laughs> I don't know a lot of atheists that go to Bible school. This is something that people just don't know.